Hey guys, what's happening? Kevin Yates here, Yates Performance Training, back again today in the freezing cold, finishing up uh, doing some minimalist muscle building workout today. So I've got some overhead presses, um, doing some modified pull-ups as well, and uh, just keeping myself feeling pretty good today. So, um, but today I wanted to, to share this video and talk to you about five of what I have found to be the most effective and powerful neuro tools for building muscle, gaining strength, decreasing pain and improving mobility um, and overall performance, especially as we get older. So if you're over 40, over 50, um, if you are not um, making the progress that you'd like to be making, if you're not seeing results from you know, your workouts, or if you find that um, you're dealing with a lot of, um, or just any nagging aches and pains, um, you know, recurring kind of injuries that won't seem to go away. You've seen maybe doctors, um, you tried rehab exercises, stretches, um, you know, cortisone shots, maybe pain relievers, things like that, ice, heat, massage, chiropractic adjustments, and, and nothing's really working. It's still there. Um, this, is, this is really important because, you know, I say this in a lot of my videos, um, you know, when this is happening, if we just keep doing the same things that, that we always do, what exercises do I need? What stretches do I need? You know, we tend to get the same results and things don't get really a whole lot better. Um, so, you know, whenever I have something like this going on within myself, or if I have a client that comes in um, and they've got some issues like this, then I, I tend to look a little bit deeper into what areas of the brain um, need a little more activation because a lot of times what happens, especially as we get older, certain areas of the brain that are responsible for improving strength and mobility and things like that um, are underactive or we can say underperforming. They need a little bit more activation. And so we have to um, you know, do more specific drills that are more specific for these, these areas within the brain um, to get the brain and nervous system. So um, kind of like um, working a little bit better. And when we do that, what we'll find is that you will, uh, your mobility will start to improve. So movements that maybe you felt a little stiff or a little tight doing, you know, if you had some kind of restrictions, um, they tend to improve. So you move a little bit better. It feels a little easier. You're maybe a little more balanced. You can, you can move further. Um, things feel better, right? If you have nagging aches and pains, the pain starts to, to decrease. Um, sometimes it just goes away um, altogether. So, you know, these are the types of things we see. Um, as we move better uh, and, and we activate the nervous system, then we also have more strength accessible to us. A lot of times it's like we can't really ex access um, the strength that we have because we have movement issues. Um, the nervous system, like I said, in the brain, certain areas of it are underactivated, so we can't really express the strength that we normally would. Um, so we start to gain access to that. We get stronger. Um, there's more of like this interaction with the brain nervous system and the body. And when it's all working together really well, you're more stable, you're stronger, right? Things happen. When we become stronger and we can like lift more or maybe we can do more repetitions with um, weights that, on certain exercises or with certain weights, uh, and then we can build more muscle. So things like that start to happen. So getting right into it, um, let's talk about this. Um, these are some neuro tools. Five of them I'll share with you that I've used with myself and with my clients and saw some really good results from. So um, one of these is just like these guys. It's like really, you can just use a standard tennis ball. These are like yoga balls that I got. Um, I like it because there's like two in here so I could cover a little uh, broader area. I've done a video or two videos or something before. If you look, you'll find them, but these I use for sensory stimulation. Um, so depending on either if there's a movement, if I'm a little stiff, you know, if my knees aren't bending well or my you know feet, my ankles aren't moving well, shoulders, things like that, or if I'm doing a workout, like an upper body workout, I'll like rub these around my, my shoulder for like a, a little bit. Um, or if I'm doing like a squat day, I might, you know, do these around my ankles, my feet, deadlifts, maybe my hips, things like that. So these are great um, because what they do is they, they work more with like what we call proprioception. Um, and it just gives some proprioceptive input to the brain 
and just basically helps kind of um, almost wake it up, I guess you could say. And so what that can do in a lot of cases is just, it, it can improve mobility right out the gate. And I've had that happen where, you know, I do a movement, I kind of see how I'm moving. So let's say I was doing like a squat and I will either feel it out or I'll film it like, you know, on my phone and record it. And I'll look at, you know, how it looks, how far down did I get? Um, and then I'll do a drill like that and add some stim to it. And then I'll reassess, do my squat again, and I'll check it out. In a lot of cases, it has unlocked like a significant amount more of mobility um, just by doing that one drill. So uh, that's one way to do it. Um, manual uh, sensory stimulation is a great, great tool. Um, and that's something that we should be using before we do any mobility work anyway, because the way that um, the, the brain and nervous system work is that we need the sensory input to the area before the brain can actually move it well. Um, and that doesn't mean that you can't move your shoulder without doing you know, sensory stim um, or your ankle or something like that, but to access as much mobility as you have in that joint or the limb, um, that's where the stim comes in because we don't always access it. And especially if you're stiff, if you have restrictions, you're tight in certain areas, the sensory input from the stim can help wake up the brain and nervous system to allow you to have more mobility from that area. So uh, sensory stim, like I said, you can use a tennis ball for it. You can roll a towel up and do it. Um, so it's, it's very easy to do. It's very quick and very simple. Uh, another tool, this one, uh, is for, um, this, these are called shocks. And so they're just like, you know, like headphones. You just wear them, put them in. But what they do is they sync with an app um, on your phone. And so what you do is you set the app for a certain frequency. And so what it will do, what you'll feel and you'll hear a light buzzing sound in, um, in the shocks, right? And they don't actually shock you. It's just a light buzzing sound. Uh, but what that does is just kind of a, mm, 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 it does it like that. And so what that does is that works for what we call the vestibular system, um, which just helps us kind of navigate our movement. Um, and, and it lets us know basically the brain and nervous system, you know, uh, how we're moving, what direction we're moving, like what way is up, how we move through our field of gravity. And again, it's like, you know, you can probably walk and everything and you know what forward is and backward is. It's not like that, um, but it just helps wake that system up. And that system is responsible for that. And a lot of times, you know, especially um, if you have balance type issues, um, if you ever have issues where like if you're walking on a treadmill um, and maybe like you, you get like a little lightheaded or you feel a little disoriented, um, if you do exercises, maybe like squats or something like that, and same thing, you maybe feel a little bit off, um, chances are there could be a vestibular system issue going on. So that can kind of help with that because whenever there's an issue happening in the brain and nervous system, um, an area that's underactivated, not performing well, and the brain needs to be able to use these systems. So when they're not working the way that they need to, what happens is the brain starts to activate the, the whole threat meter, right? We talk about the threat bucket. It increases this sense of threat. And so what will happen is the brain will tell the body to stop moving. So it will shut down your mobility. So you will feel tight. You will feel limited in movement. You will lose strength. Um, and it can increase sensitivity to things like pain. So um, very interesting when you think about that. So that's a little bit of something you could do for the vestibular system. Um, vestibular system, like I said, um, if you're doing things like carries, doing workouts where you're carrying things and walking with them, um, if you are doing things like uh, squats, it could be very useful. Deadlifts, it could be useful for lunges. It could be useful step-ups, um, things like that. Any kind of like jumping type activity or running. Um, so, you know, in to a degree, even like golfing, tennis and stuff like that. Um, sports activity. So there's your vestibular system. Uh, so that's that. And then I've got um, a pencil. <laughs> wow, real, real cool tool. Uh, but this one I use for my visual system because again, the field of vision, if we have issues with our, with our, um, how our brain interprets our field of vision, um, like for me, 
I had a period of time where I was having a difficult time with depth perception. So if I was like driving, for example, um, I might have trouble like at night seeing the distance between like the car in front of me and, um, it, or if there was like a stop sign and a car and then me, I would have trouble like gauging the distance between me and the stop sign and the car in front of me. It was weird stuff like that. I, I, it was like, uh, you know, watching a TV without HD and standard definition. You can't really recognize depth very well. <clears throat> so um, I will use uh, what I call pencil push-ups where I hold the pencil out and then I'll move it, you know, closer toward my eyes and then back out. And I will do that um, before doing things like bench pressing um, or incline presses where, you know, I, I, I have to recognize how, as crazy as this sounds, how close the barbell is to, to my head or to my body and how far away it is. Um, Cause again, you know, when you don't have uh, visual clarity or something is off, the brain again works the same way. Threat goes up and movement, strength, performance all shut down. Pain tends to increase and all that stuff. Um, a good friend of mine, I worked with him uh, a few weeks back. You know, he's a drummer and a bowler and he was having uh, issues with his shoulder. He had a, a right shoulder issue and it was messing up his, uh, his gigs as a drummer. He wasn't able to hold the sticks right. Um, sometimes he was having trouble, um, you know, playing and, uh, and even bowling. He's like a big avid bowler. And so, you know, he had been through all the rehab stuff and did all kinds of exercises and, you know, had adjustments and you name it, stretching and everything and nothing was working. And so, you know, I, um, had him, you know, I, I assessed him and saw that his, his visual field on his right side was a little bit unclear compared to anything that was straight and on his left but things on his right were a little less clear. He had a little less clarity there, and didn't see things as clear. So everything on his right side, like when he moved his right arm, his brain would shut the movement down. So, um, you know, that's what would happen. So we had to do some drills for him, just a couple drills to help improve that. And he noticed it right out the gate. There was a huge difference. His mobility improved right away. Um, and he used to have like, like he was having tremors and things like when, um, it got really bad and he's saying like the tremors have significantly, significantly decreased and they're much farther and fewer between, um, having them. So definitely important that we've got, um, the visual field working really well. So what's that? One, two, three. I got another one, uh, which is just your basic eye chart. Like you see at your DMV or your doctor's office, but, um, you know, things that I'll do with that. Um, again, I can work with like uh, vision. Um, I can work with more like doing things that work with like coordination where I'll touch a certain letter on the chart and back to the tip of my nose. So um, it's like frontal lobe area of the brain that organizes movement. And if you think that's not important to building muscle and gaining strength, think about what exercise is. When you lift weights, when you move or when you play sports and run, you know, it's all about movement. If you don't move well, if, if your brain can't not um, organize movements well or do it fast enough, then again, your, your gains are gonna suffer. Um, and you're more likely to experience pain and injuries because uh, the body will try and figure out ways to compensate that usually um, are not healthy, uh, normal movement patterns. Uh, so we got that. And then um, last one really is, is uh, some joint mobility. Now, you know, joint mobility, you would probably think of it like stretching and things like that. Um, but the way that, that I, from a neuro standpoint, uh, will work with joint mobility is to like, is to work on specific areas that will activate more specific areas in the body. So for example, um, like before doing like squatting or if I'm going to do any like jumping that day, um, I will do things like outside, um, like ankle tilts, um, uh, because the, the, the joints and the nerves, uh, in, in the outside ankle tend to link to and help activate the hamstrings, um, or doing like outside foot type mobility work, which will help to activate the glute, like the glute medius type area. Um, like do like the top of the foot mobility on the top of the foot, um, which helps like if I'm doing lunges that day to activate the quads. So they are definitely specific. Um, they have specific neural kind of, or neurological links um, through the, to, 
certain muscles of the body. So that's how I look at like the mobility work. It's just, you know, feeding sensory input to the brain and nervous system so that we can improve strength and movement and gain muscle and improve performance and decrease pain in, in other areas of the body that it links to. So that's, that's it. That's what I wanted to share today. It was just those five neuro tools that you can use um, to help improve your strength, gain muscle, you know, in your 40s, 50s and beyond, um, improve your mobility, decrease, you know, pain and uh, hopefully prevent injury and just improve your overall performance and quality of life. So hopefully that helps. And, uh, you know, let me know what you think. Um, try some of these out, try them out and see how they work for you. And, you know, if you have questions, just type them in the in the uh, comments below, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and if there's anything else that uh, you'd like to know more about or whatever, um, let me know. I'll be happy to do like a future video and, uh, and uh, maybe do it on that, all right? So in the meantime, hope you guys have an awesome day and uh, until next time, talk to you then.